Hey, welcome to part 6 of my procedural notes series in Blender. Today we're going to take a look at some interesting ways that you can combine Voronoi, Noise, and Musgrave textures and get some cool results. This is all limiting yourself to only 7 nodes, by the way. We're going to see how that's done. So let's start out by looking at the raw noise texture. So I've got five different versions on the screen, and this is a relatively simple texture, so we can see most of the possibilities in these five examples. The far left, we've just got the default version, and I've, I've used a color ramp as well to just add more contrast to the image so you can see what's going on a bit better. Then low detail, you can see it's much smoother. High detail, it's you know less smooth than the original. And then distortion, you've got some weird curvy bits in there. And then distortion turned up to five, uh, much more curvy bits and a lot more detail as well. Next up, let's check out the Voronoi texture. There's four possibilities here. There's Euclidean Manhattan, Chebyshev, and Minkowski. And within that, there's three other possibilities. There's F1, F2, and Smooth F1. This is D2E, which stands for Distance to Edge, is kind of its own thing. Uh, you can't actually switch between the other categories in that one, so I just put it up here once. Let's start with Euclidean F1. We just see a bunch of circles with different gray values and sizes. F2 is still a bunch of circles, but then we've got some lines and also kind of leaf shapes. Then we've got smooth F1, which is just like F1, but when the circles get too close to each other, they connect, kind of like metaballs do. And then we've got the distance to edge, which kind of looks like cracked mud or, you know, scales, something like that. Next up is Manhattan F1. It's a bunch of diamonds of various sizes and shades. And then we've got F2, which is a bunch of diamonds as well, but we've got some lines and uh, kind of rectangles going diagonally. Smooth F1, again, is just like F1, but if these get too close to each other, they connect. And then Chebyshev F1 is a bunch of squares of various sizes and shades again. F2 is a bunch of squares, but also a bunch of rectangles and line segments. And then smooth F1, just like F1, but they connect. Next up, Minkowski, F1 is a bunch of kind of star shapes. You can see that they kind of curve inwards on each side there, and just to varying sizes. F2 uh, was really hard to bring much out on the default value here, the default settings rather. I had to crank up the color ramp even just get just to get this, but again, some diamonds. And then smooth F1, uh, we should see some connections. It's kind of hard to see them, but I'll bet they're there. They're just more subtle. Let's take another look at Voronoi, but this time with the randomness turned all the way down to zero. This gives us our Voronoi's true form. Looking at Euclidean F1, we can see a bunch of circles, and it almost looks like a Connect 4 game. F2 is a bunch of leaf textures. Smooth F1 is, you know, very similar. It looks like uh, the first image just has more contrast. And then Distance to Edge, just a bunch of squares with a slight gradient in each square. Manhattan F1, you know, a bunch of uh, diamonds there again. It almost looks like a kitchen floor. Uh, F2 looks like it has diamonds plus these other shapes in the middle there. And F1 smooth, uh, again, similar to F1, just stuff is connecting a bit more. Chebyshev F1, just a bunch of squares. F2, a bunch of squares again, uh, just uh, looks like to be osp opposite values there. Smooth F1 just looks a lot like uh, Chebyshev F1, but it uh, connects a little bit more. Minkowski, we've got those star shapes again. And uh, F2 is almost invisible again. Smooth F1 looks a lot like F1. Let's take a look at the Musgrave texture. On the top, I've got five different options here. We've got multifractal, rich multifractal, hybrid multifractal, FBM, and hetero terrain on the top row. These are all the default options here. So you can see multifractal looks like its own thing, rich multifractal looks like its own thing, and then these last three look fairly similar. And on the bottom row, I've got varied uh, options of the top options there. So this is multifractional down here, multifractal, pardon me, and this is what happens when you set it to low dimension and high lacunarity. And then on the second one here, this is ridged multifractal, but with a raised offset. Then we see hybrid multifractal with a raised offset here as well. FBM with low dimension and high lacunarity. 
and then hetero terrain with low lacunarity and raised offset. So you can see we get some variety between these bottom ones here. They definitely look a little bit different than those top ones. So that is the textures we're going to use today. Don't worry if you don't have those memorized or anything like that. I just wanted to show you what they look like in their base form before we start mixing them together and making them more complicated. For the next step, let's hop into Blender. I'm going to delete this default cube, add in a plane, and before I forget, I'll turn on these keys as well so you can see what I'm doing if you're having trouble following along. I'm going to split this window and open up the shader editor on the left. Hit N there, create a new material, delete this default principled BDSF they have there for me and bring in a noise texture. I'm going to hit Control T and that brings up a mapping and texture coordinate node and I'm going to change this to object and move the texture coordinate node over a little bit. Let's see what this looks like so far. Go into rendered mode. It's that same noise texture that we used to looking at there and I'm going to add in a color ramp to increase the contrast and make it uh, look a little bit more clear what we're looking at here. So just bring these values in here. And so the first way we can vary this texture is by introducing something onto this line here called the vector line between the texture coordinate node and the mapping node. And this is something I've seen Secretic do quite a lot and he's the main guy who taught me this. I have seen other guys do it as well but it's something I mostly attribute to him. So I'm going to put a noise texture on there and you can see it gets quite crazy here. I'm going to add it one more node, the mix RGB and put it here and then run object to color 2. So now, if we move this factor to the right, it basically means that this noise texture has no influence, and we just are basically seeing what we saw when this was the only texture connected here. And if we move it all the way to the left, we can see total influence. And it was like it was before we even put this mix RGB node in here. So this is the first way that we can vary this texture and get some interesting results. The second way that you can vary this up is by changing either one or both of these noise textures to either a Voronoi or a Musgrave. Let's try doing that with this guy here. Let's take this off and put in a Voronoi texture. Connect this object to the vector then the distance to color 1 and maybe push this down a little bit and turn up the distortion uh, detail and scale. Look at that. We've got a little bit of a different texture there already. Adjust the color ramp. Yeah, kind of cool. The next way we could change it up is by plugging something different into the factor of this mix RGB right here. For instance, we could take the distance from the Voronoi texture and plug that in. See how it changes. It doesn't change by that much, but it does change. We could also take the object from the texture coordinate and plug that right into the factor. See what that looks like. The next way we could vary this texture is by adding in a math node. And there's a couple spots we could put this. It looks pretty good if we put it between the mapping and the last texture one here. We change this to snap, turn it down a bit. It looks pretty interesting. We could also put this over here just after the mix or just after the Voronoi. It looks kind of interesting too. It all gives us different results. The last way that I varied these textures was just using this mapping node. Each one of these values can be tweaked and it gives different results. So this is something you can adjust to. Okay, so now that you understand how I'm making these textures, look, let's look at a few examples of some of my favorite that I made. I'm going to start by adding, adding in a Voronoi texture here, change it to distance to edge, and add in a color ramp afterwards. Let's just connect these up. And I'm going to change this to 5.4 right there. Bring in the color ramp a little bit so you can see it a bit better. I'm going to highlight the Voronoi, hit Control T, and move this texture coordinate over, and plug in the object there. Then let's add in a Musgrave, plug it right here, and add in a Mix RGB, and put it right here, and then plug in the object to Color 2. I'm going to set this mix to 0 0.9, and then I'm going to adjust these values here to 1.6, 4.5, 0.9, 1.6, 4.5, then I'm going to come over here, bump up this Z by 3, and put negative 45 on this Z rotation. And finally, add in a math node right before this Voronoi. I'm going to change it to logarithm and leave it at 0.5. And there we go. We've got a pretty cool texture, and it's just using seven nodes here.
Let's look at a second example. I'm going to bring in a Voronoi texture again. This time I'm going to change it to F2 and Chebyshev. Then add in a color wrap here. Connect this up and bring in these values a bit. Just like that. Then hit Control T and move this over. And we're going to bring in a noise texture for this vector line here. Connect this to object and then bring in a mix RGB put this here and plug this in. And I'm going to change this factor or this, this scale to 10, detail to 2, and distortion to 2, and then come over here to the Voronoi and change this to 3. Change the mix to 0.95 and the last step is just adding in a math node right after this Voronoi, changing it to snap and bringing this down to 0.1. And there we go. That's it. That's a pretty interesting texture for seven notes. Let's check out a third example here. I'm going to bring in the Musgrave texture, then add in a color wrap, put this afterwards, connect these up, and then for the Musgrave, I'm going to change it to 15, 3, 0.5, and 5, just like that. And then hit Control T here, bring up the texture coordinate and the mapping, and I'm going to put a Voronoi on the vector line there. Bring in a mix RGB, place this here. Make sure distance is plugged into color one, not color. And then I'm going to change this to object and this one to object as well. This mix, we're going to set at 0.2, just like that. And uh, this Voronoi, I'm going to change this to F2 and Minkowski just like that. And the scale is going to be 1.5, the exponent is going to be 5, and the randomness is going to be 0. Just like that. And there we go. This is only six nodes, a little less, but uh, pretty interesting texture we've got there. Let's look at a fourth example. I'm going to bring in a Voronoi, place it here, and bring in a color ramp. Just put it afterwards. Uh, bring this in a little bit just so we can see what's going on and then bring in these two nodes with control T move this over bring in another Voronoi and uh, plug it in there bring in the mix RGB plug it in here attach these to object just like that and uh, I'm not going to touch anything on the scales uh, this first one's going to be F1 the second one's going to be F2 so I'll change that and uh, this is coming at a color, it should be coming at a distance. I'm going to change that. I'm going to leave that scale at 0.5 and I'm going to add one more thing in here and that's just a math node here. Let's go ahead and do that. Leave it on add and I'm just going to bring it to 0.6 and there we go. That's our texture. Just this interesting circle thing. Um, you know, it's kind of cool. Let's look at a final example here. I'm going to bring in a Voronoi texture. I'm going to set it to F2 and leave it on 5. I'm going to bring in a color ramp and connect this up just like that. And let's bring in, oh, let's uh, bring in those texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Move this over and let's add in another Voronoi. I'm going to duplicate this one here and we're going to leave it on F2. Euclidean and leave it at that scale. Hook up the object and the mix RGB. And make sure this is coming out of distance. Plug this in down here and we'll change this to 0.75 and then what we'll do is we will add a math node just right here and change this to wrap. I'm not actually sure what this is doing, but it just gives some interesting results. So it's going to change this to 1 and then 0.8 for that second value. And uh, let's bring this color ramp in, see what we got. And then I'm going to go over to this mapping node here and change Z on the rotation to negative 45. So now we have it just running horizontally. Looks a little cooler. Kind of looks like bushes or something like that. It's kind of interesting. Okay, well that's it. I hope you were able to follow along, but if you weren't, please feel free and ask any questions.
Um, yeah, you might be asking how did I get some of those shapes and the answer is just playing around with stuff. Uh, you know, the stuff I showed you, do what you can to learn the most you can from these notes and you want to basically get to the point where when you're about to plug something in you're looking at an image and you kinda know what's gonna happen to it before you plug that in and then once you plug it in the thing that you expected happens and that's uh, when you really know the notes well. So you want to play around with them till you get more familiar with them like that. Thanks for watching.